is Volusia Today, a public information radio program brought to you by the County of Volusia. Here is your host, Kevin Captain. Good morning and welcome to Volusia Today. I'm Clayton Jackson, the County, County Volusia's Community Information Activity Project Manager. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. First of all, Kevin Captain is not available today, so I am filling in in his role. And first, we'd like to thank our sponsors. Volusia Today is made possible by the Daytona Beach International Airport, the Ocean Center, Volusia Recycles, and Votran Public Transportation. Today, I'm joined by our co-host, Heather Belden, the Marketing Specialist for the County's Community Information Division. Good morning, Heather. How are you doing today? Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, I'm wonderful, and I'm wonderful. And before we get into our guest segment and so forth, we just want to take a minute to extend our just the condolences. And what our community has experienced has been nothing short of devastating and heart-wrenching. Um, I'm sure you've seen it in your neighborhood and have friends and family that have been impacted by this tragic event. Yes, there's many areas of our county here that, that definitely suffered from a lot of flooding damage and you know even some loss of life. So our hearts do go out to the people of Volusia County right now. And it's been absolutely awful. Like Whenever I got back home, I took a walk around their neighborhood and I, I just I got back, I walked in my house and told my wife, I said, I, I can't even imagine like what some people are going through. And a few of us were talking in our subdivision that there was an elderly lady whose house flooded and she said that she lost 40 to 50 years worth of photographs. Like we keep telling everybody that, you know, tangible items can be replaced, but some things of that sentimental memory cannot be replaced. So again, we just extend our condolences to everybody who has been just impacted by this tragedy. Um, well, today with us, we have Jim Judge. Jim is the County of Lucia's Emergency Management Director. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Clayton. Good morning, Heather. Great to be here. Good morning. So, we have a lot to unpack on today's show. Um, but first, we know you've been around a while, and <laughs> not, but not about your age. We're talking about in emergency <laughs> management. So a little bit quite, of both, well, Clayton. Well, well, <laughs> you said it, not me. Um, so, in terms of damage, how does Ian compare to other storms, like such as Charlie? Because we've heard numerous times that this, the storm's path has been compared to Charlie. And some are even saying that Ian actually had um, more tragic impacts as far as coastal damage than previous storms. So do you want to talk a little bit about the impact? Absolutely. Um, Hurricane Ian was 10 times larger than Charlie. Uh, as a matter of fact, you could take Charlie and actually put it within the eye of Ian. Wow. Just, uh, you know, so a huge storm followed the path of Charlie, uh, but uh, Ian was uh, uh, so much more devastating. And you're right, you know, we, uh, we've had damage all over the community, all the way from the beaches, all along the St. John's River, and everything in between. Thousands of homes have been flooded. Uh, as you mentioned, we've lost uh, five individuals from drowning, mm -hmm. um, and that's usually the, uh, what happens, you know, when, when individuals do lose their life, it's, it's usually from drowning. And we certainly had uh, a great deal of rain. Um, New Smyrna Beach had over 21 inches. Wow. 21. But then besides the rainfall, they also had uh, uh, wind gusts up to 96 miles an hour. That's category two winds. And then there was uh, 45 to 55 sustained for many hours over the county, followed by those tremendous wind gusts. But then, of course, you know, 15, 18, 19, and, of course, New Smyrna, 21 inches of rain. They're calling this a thousand-year event. A so somewhat years. historic. Wow, that uh, I don't even know how to follow up with that. Like that, it is. It's awful. It is awful. Um, well, before let's talk FEMA a little bit because what we're getting a lot of calls and a lot of citizens are inquiring about FEMA stepping in to help our community. So, tell us a little bit about exactly what FEMA's role is in responding to this disaster in our community. You bet. You know, FEMA plays a huge role along with the Florida Division of Emergency Management. So as we see a storm approaching, we put in what's called Web EOC. It's our request to the state for both a FEMA representative to be in the EOC as well as representative from the Florida Division of Emergency Management. So they actually come in as we go to the partial two and then full activation. Uh, we have a FEMA and a Florida Division of Emergency Management representative in the EOC right now. So that's our liaison with uh, those folks uh, up the chain, so to speak. Uh, our liaison with the Florida Division of Emergency Management is our liaison with Tallahassee 
and then of course with FEMA all the way up to Atlanta, which is the Region 4 area for our area. But, uh, but then they also provide a wealth of information on, you know, different programs. Um, for instance, we're working on the TSA, we call it, the um, Transitional Sheltering Assistance. And uh, so we're working with individuals to register for that Transitional Sheltering Assistance now. Uh, and you can do that through that Individual Assistance Portal. And, uh, and then that will, once qualified, there's criteria you have to, to put in to, to qualify. And then you have the opportunity to get into a hotel or motel, um, you know, as you work to clean up your home and so forth. So FEMA provides a wealth of information. We also have three FEMA disaster assistance teams in the county right now. So they've been over at the Ocean Center working with those individuals who have been displaced, making sure that they're registered for individual assistance and the transitional sheltering assistance. But then once we get that completed, they'll be moving throughout the county to be able to assist citizens uh, with continuing that process and also you know, looking at the damage and reporting that up. So far, we've had uh, about $184 million in damage, and we're still far from, from the total number as, as we, the areas are still difficult to get into. Well, and I've heard you know, a couple of people have asked, you know, when will we know the final tally? When is going to be all the da final damage report? And that could be a week or even longer away. Oh, wow. So the number just keeps rising every day. They do. You know, and again, there's some areas uh, um, down in Lake Carney Woods and some areas that are just difficult still to get into. Um, and, of course, we're still in, uh, while, while we're working on recovery, we're still in somewhat of a response mode because the St. John's River, you know, from Lake Carney to DeLand, all the way up to Astor is at major flood stage. So certainly those people along there have been impacted Stone Island. We have literally delivered um, sand in those areas, but our corrections uh, have not only filled, but delivered thousands of sandbags to Stone Island, Osteen, DeLand, out to Astor, to be able to help those residents uh, be able to, you know, do what they can do to protect their homes from the rising waters. We're hoping that uh, this weekend that things will begin to uh, crest and that then we'll see the, uh, the St. John's begin to recede. But that's going to be a week to two weeks before that's going to happen. So, you know, we're going to be holding on to this water for a while. And what we are asking, too, is for anyone who thinks about going boating, um, you know, any kind of wake at all is very dangerous along the St. John's because you go by, you make a wake, you're going to push that water up into people's homes. So mm -hmm. working with Lake County Sheriff's Office, Volusia County Sheriff's Office, FWC, to really patrol the waterways all along the St. John's and, uh, you know, and, and make sure that the boaters are behaving themselves and not creating problems for our residents. Right, and that's excellent information. And I just wanna give a shout out to you and your team. You all gave us a lot of great information to get out to the community. And I wanna, Heather, we talk a little bit about the Penn site, just what, what citizens know. If they don't know about it, they need to know about it. Yeah, so we here at the County of Volusia have our Penn site, which stands for Public Information Network. and. It is basically a comprehensive look at Volusia County and what we have in terms of information available to everybody who not only lives in unincorporated Volusia, but we get information constantly from all the municipalities that are here within our county. And it, everything from A to Z, you know, we start with a storm debris pickup, which we'll get into a little bit here, um, sandbag information for those who are still being impacted, um, some different assistant options. So like what Jim was talking about with the FEMA, we have all the information there for phone numbers to call, um, web pages to visit, or apps to download that can help. Um, and, you know, back to that FEMA assistance, what are some other areas of public assistance that you've seen that are out there for people who are still needing some resources during this well, time? Well, you know, along with the um, disaster assistance teams will be moving about the county, just helping individuals register for individual assistance or helping them, you know, be able to get uh, a, a hotel or motel room through that transitional sheltering assistance. Um, then, of course, they work with the, uh, the cities and the county. So right now... Um, we have been approved for FEMA reimbursement. We're a, a declared county, so we will get Category A, which is debris, Category B, which are protective measures, you know, because we want to, we don't want to, you know, uh, spend all of our taxpayer dollars. We want to be able to uh, recoup a lot of this money, um, you know, that, that's going out. So then generally in, in the past storms, FEMA would come in and they would evaluate the community to get us additional categories, which is 
everything from C through G that includes road improvements, looking at our parks and uh, white goods, which would be, you know, refrigerators and all those types of things for disposal. So um, we've already been approved for that because the damage is so extensive. Uh, the drone footage and all the pictures that we sent up uh, quickly got us a uh, local declaration. And again, all those additional categories that are really good for the cities, for the county to be able to get out there, you know, put things back the way they were. Um, and that's going to take some time. Our, our beach walkovers, our, you know, the ramps going down, there's just so much damage um, all throughout the county. So, you know, but uh, we've got some, some wonderful teams that are coming, and we've got Team Rubicon that's on the ground uh, looking at the damage. They expect to have a, a full complement of people coming in on, on Monday. And, of course, those are retired military folks that uh, uh, we worked with during the COVID, uh, both with the uh, – vaccinations and then also the testing so they're well known to us outstanding group the uh, southern baptist uh, uh, disaster relief folks they'll be coming in um, already so and then there'll be other groups coming in to be able to help our citizens yeah, I be think able I to saw crisis cleanup crisis cleanup you know that's where if you haven't already done so and you've had damage you know that you can go in and log in to crisis cleanup to uh, make sure that we know that you've had damage so as we have these volunteers and teams moving about the county you know that that you don't get missed right and speaking of crisis cleanup i want to make sure that people aware of this that if you are a first responder that you'd actually receive priority when you do request a crisis cleanup and again our first responders have responders have been valuable in responding to rescues to actually cleaning up our neighborhoods just trying to get to community they're a first line of defense and cleanup effort so we do want to thank you to every first responder out there and to let them know that you know they would see receive priority if they do request a crisis cleanup just make sure to identify yourself as a first responder when you do so uh, so when we're at the pin site we keep saying pin but we will make sure everybody knows that that is volusia.org forward slash pin and pin is p-i-n there's a wealth of information there like heather saying sandbags and we update this every few hours if not every hour as soon as information gets in on our community services department they've been wonderful in updating us about food banks emergency food availability that we make sure to update that the way citizens have the most real-time information and we also work closely with our municipalities because you know, we'll get into debris quick uh, uh, debris cleanup in the next segment but you know each mun municipality has little different policies procedures about how to clean up days and so forth so we publish that as soon as we're able to know and to keep our citizens informed um, and then also was Again, all this information is found on our website, thevolution.org slash pen. You'll probably hear me say that a few more times today. But again, we encourage any resident who has been impacted any way, shape, or form to please apply for assistance. And all that information, like Heather said, you can apply online. Just to let everybody know that the this is through FEMA and the application is available in English, Spanish, as well as other languages as well. And I also saw, Clayton, that our Volusia County libraries have people available to assist on yes. site. Oh, yes, I forgot about that. Yeah. That is Yes, they are there to help you. So if you don't have power yet, if you don't have internet, you don't have access, or you just have questions about how to apply, our library staff are able to jump in and help you there. And we have all of our library branches are up and going besides the uh, John H. Dickerson Library on Keach Street. That's the only one that is still not up and operational at this point. And, and our power companies have done an incredible job, FPL, Duke, um, uh, New Smyrna Utilities, Clay. Uh, as we know it now, everybody that can receive power has received it. So that's really good that's news. That's wonderful. And I've been here for years in Florida. And a lot of people who haven't lived here don't understand how quickly they did respond in regard to how much damage we had. It's the truth. We were almost half the county without power. And uh, we had the resources in, in both Duke. Again, FPNL can't say enough about those folks. They're in the EOC and have been, you know, through uh, until the power was restored. And then uh, they go back to their normal jobs. But uh, they did an awesome job getting things back up and running. Yes, they did. Like the collaboration, I talked to them many times when we were giving our reports, how many citizens are still without power. They were able to rattle those numbers off right to us then and there. So, again, amazing partnerships. They work diligently around the clock. Again, thank you to, to those companies as well because, as I said, you don't realize how much 
you depend on electricity till you don't have it. I mean, that might make sense like very cliche, but it's true. Um, you know, and when you don't have power, you don't have internet. And <laughs> now, now, if I can just get my cable back up, you know, we're going to have some ball games on this weekend. But, yeah. Uh, we might even get a little time off, but, uh, you know, so hopefully the cable's be coming back on for you all of us You can come to my well. house, Jeff. Okay. As long as you root for the gamers. <laughs> no. <laughs> you got it. That's no problem there. All right. <laughs> but I don't want, to, don't want to look bad, but I am a Tennessee Volunteer fan. So, But, hey, that's like two, the only second time in 17 years, everyone. So I'm not going to go up too much on there about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, Jim, real quick about the Disaster Recovery Center. Uh, we're getting some questions about that. Do you want to talk just a little bit more about the process and what's going on with that? Absolutely. You know, the Disaster Recovery Center uh, is an important hub in the community. Uh, we'll have uh, not only FEMA there, we'll have this, the uh, Small Business Administration, which is not just for businesses, it's for individuals, homeowners as well, as well as businesses. So uh, we're working on getting that up and running. Right now, uh, FEMA is due today to inspect the facility. There's a list of criteria that we have to meet, and we've met it before. So we'll be going back to uh, Holsenbach Drive, which is the main health department. Large facility, meets all the FEMA criteria, lots of parking, you know, security, the whole deal. And uh, so we hope to announce the opening of that, hopefully by later today, oh, that wow. uh, it may be, you know, the weekend, it may be Monday. Um, they're bringing all their resources in, and then usually they'll do a soft opening to test all the equipment, and then it'll be, you know, full on. So, you know, it would be wonderful to have multiple disaster assistance centers, but, you know, as we've been told, given the magnitude of the damage and destruction throughout the state, we're going to get one disaster recovery center. And again, that's going to be at the main health department on Holsenbach. Inspection today, not open yet. We will announce that. But then we're also hoping to get a mobile unit where we can move the mobile unit around the county to different community centers to be able to provide assistance as well. So we're hopeful that we will get that. That's wonderful. Great. Well, at this point, I think we will take a break, and uh, we'll be right back. Stay tuned, and we'll see you in a few. Hello, Tom Sisko coming to you from the Lucia County Emergency Operations Center. Severe wind damage and flooding can be expected with any tropical cyclone. It is important that you have a plan and know how to execute it in the event of severe weather. If you live in an evacuation zone, make sure you secure your home and head for safety. Keep fresh batteries in your NOAA weather radio in the event the power goes out. And download our free emergency management app from any smart device. Volusia County is our home. If we don't respect it, who will? Litter is a problem, one that we can solve, but it's going to take all of us working together. Did you know that Volusia County has several programs and events that can help keep our coastal environment clean and litter free? You can become a Jetty Ambassador, participate in a waterway or coastal cleanup, utilize a fill a bag station, organize a beach cleanup, or adopt a beach. I walk the beaches every day, I see the pollution that's around, and I want to make it better, and each and every one of us have a part in this. We have receptacles everywhere in Volusia County. Make sure you use them, that's why they're here. The problem is serious, and one we have created. Well, you don't have to go far from the beach to see the effects of it. You can come right here to our Marine Science Center and see our turtles and our birds and the effects that it takes on them. Many of them were suffering from being caught or entangled in fishing line and gear left in the environment or ingesting litter and trash such as plastic bags and balloons. This can lead to severe injury or even death. What matters is that we all do our part to fix it. Don't be a litter bug and pick up litter when you see it. Every litter bit counts. It is up to all of us to teach all of them to what? Keep Volusia litter free. Keep Volusia beautiful. We're back, I'm Heather Belden along with Clayton Jackson and you're listening to Volusia Today, a public information program brought to you by the County of Volusia. 
So Jim, let's talk about storm cleanup. What, you know, what are some differences you're seeing between major flooding versus wind damage for this hurricane versus other ones in terms of cleanup? You know, we always look at the hurricanes. Is it a wind event? Is it a rain event? Is it both? And I would tell you this was primarily a rain event for Volusia County. Uh, also, we had the wind, you know, so we do have a lot of vegetative out there that, uh, you know, with those hurricane force gusts that did move around the county. So we've got a little bit of both, but certainly the rain um, and with that, the flooding. So, you know, homeowners, if you've had anything that's been saturated with flood water, it's got to go. Carpeting, furniture, anything like that's got to come out. But uh, you always want to make sure that as you move it to the side of the road, that you separate your vegetative from everything else. Right. Because if it's all mixed together, it won't get picked up. And that means somebody's got to go out and, and do the separation so that it can be picked up. So vegetative in one pile, everything else in another pile. The so that's construction just, and demolition in one. And I think we also are saying some of the white goods, and even yes, in a separate. Exactly. And the white goods would be your washer, your dryer, your refrigerator, those types of appliances that... Exactly. Uh, were affected too. So even if you've got uh, teddy bears that were mm. saturated, they got to go. Um, and then also the cleanup, because the most important is, you know, the preventing the mold. So uh, mold happens very quickly. You get the black mold. And at that point, then you've got to cut out the drywall, get that moved out. You certainly want to protect yourself with a with a mask, with, with, with gloves, and, uh, and, and the protective measures that you need to take as you do those things because mold happens very quickly. So getting the carpet out, getting the furniture that's been saturated, you know, kids' toys, um, if, if they can be cleaned, then you really need to, to clean them well. Because, again, when you have flood water, there's a lot of stuff in that flood water that uh, we don't really want to talk about, but mm -hmm. <laughs> bacteria and, and things like that that, uh, you know, can really make you sick. So, uh, you know, as a kid growing up in South Florida, it was always fun to ride our bicycles through the flood water and go out there. My mother always told me to stay out of it, and she was right. So <laughs> if you don't have to be in that flood water, you know, keep the kids out, keep them safe, because you never know what's in there. You know, and of course, uh, we have snakes, alligators, and all kinds of other critters that do come out uh, when things are flooded. So just be aware of those uh, those dangers as well. Yeah, actually, there's a snake on my my kid's bedroom window during the storm. So they thought they got pictures. They thought that was just crazy right there. Um, and also plug in, as I've heard, people also need to, if they had to drive through the storm water, they probably need to take their vehicle through the car wash. Am I correct? It's a truth. You know, you never know what's up under there, you know, because some of that stuff will, you know, damage uh, your brake pads, your uh, the undercarriage. So it's just good to, to clean everything you can. It's been affected by that flood water. Right, right. right. So um, tell us a little bit about how the um, your division emergency management activated and operated the Emergencies Operations Center. And tell us what it means by being on full activation. You bet. Full activation. And of course, as, as the storm is leading up, you know, we have our Citizen Information Center up and running, you know, days ahead of the storm to be able to provide information. We get a lot of calls for sandbags, you know, for sheltering. Um, so there's a, a lot of activities that take place. Then, of course, as things move closer, we go to a partial activation and then a full activation, which means that we have what we call uh, emergency support functions, and there's 21 of those. So, for instance, law enforcement, well, that's uh, the lead is the sheriff's office. Transportation is a uh, VOTRAN along with the school system. Uh, you have uh, communication. So there's a whole long list of uh, support functions and lead agencies within the Emergency Operations Center that oversee the complete response and then, of course, help us with the recovery. So we'll have uh, anywhere from 120, 130 people in the Emergency Operations Center. But also what we did this time, too, was with our cities. We invited them to come and participate in the EOC. But then we also, with technology today, we were able to do it virtual. So we had the uh, cameras up so that they could look into the EOC. We had, again, the power companies there. So it's all about communication at that point, to be able to communicate what the situations are, what protective actions we're recommending, and then conference calls. So we're on a lot of conference calls, you know, from morning till night, not only with the National Hurricane Center, with the Florida Division of Emergency Management, our Region 5 counties, which is Volusia, all the way down to Martin, and then Orange, Osceola, Seminole, uh, Lake, Inland counties. But then we also participate in our Region 3 counties, which are those counties north of us. Then we're also on conference calls with the National Weather Service out of Melbourne. 
And then because we're on the north end of that region, we also uh, listen in on Jacksonville's National Weather Service. So it's all about information. And then looking at the protective actions and when we need to pull the trigger on those protective actions. Our school district can't say enough. Um, the superintendent, uh, Dr. Earl Johnson, was with us on those conference calls. And then, of course, we did uh, open up shelters. We had uh, two special needs shelters run by our health department. Did an incredible job. They still uh, have uh, some people they're looking after in the Ocean Center. And then two general population shelters, all pet friendly. And then even like New Smyrna opened up their community center for folks that were in the area and needed to, some safe place to go. Then, of course, we funnel all that to the Ocean Center. So right now that is the hub for our, uh, our, our sheltering. But then, of course, we're trying to demobilize that as we move people into hotels, motels, uh, find a location for those remaining special needs clients and get there somewhere safe. Uh, the Red Cross has done an incredible job managing that shelter. Uh, Salvation Army has been out providing food and, and other things uh, to areas as well. So lots of community support. Uh, thank you. You all ran a great ship out there. I was there three nights, and I think you're there maybe that as that longer, longer. So yeah, is, this uh, is uh, day 19, uh, 12 hour days, including three yeah. overnighters. Well, yeah, I know from the community information side, we can't say enough about what you have going on over there at the at the EOC, and you know you talk a lot about communication, and from our seats as the community information division. Going into that ops room, we knew we were going to be walking out with some type of information that we would be able to push to the public, and it really is just a great effort by everybody. Teamwork and, makes and a dream It was work. a nice, well-oiled machine. I knew yeah. I could go talk to a city, and I could go talk to a, a law enforcement. It, it was just a wonderful experience. All right. Well, with that, we'll take a short break, and we'll be right back. Hello again. I'm Tom Sisko from Volusia County Emergency Management. On average, Florida has close to 3,500 cloud-to-ground lightning strikes per day and has 17 out of the top 30 cities in the country, making it the lightning capital of the United States. A Florida resident is more likely to get struck by lightning than attacked by a shark. In 2018, more people were killed in Florida by lightning than any other state. Take cover when you see the first signs of lightning. Remember, if thunder roars, go indoors. Volusia County is a beautiful place to live, but if we don't respect it, who will? Litter is a problem, one that we can solve. But it's going to take all of us working together. What matters is that we all do our part. Don't be a litter bug. And pick up litter whenever you see it. Every litter bit counts. The keep keep Volusia, Volusia beautiful. beautiful. Welcome back. I'm Clayton Jackson, Wusha County Community Information Division. And we just want to thank you to Jim, uh, Jim Judge like, for giving all this great information. Been a wonderful amount of resources and all of you and your team's efforts. And Heather, thank you. I have personally got to witness you doing the social media blast and news releases. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And for our listeners, we just want to also just remind you to visit volusia.org slash pin to get the most updated information. Apply for any assistance, including FEMA and crisis cleanup. Again, thank you for listening and have a wonderful day.